everyone. I want to take you on a little tour this morning as I drive into work. I'm going to talk about thinking about putting AI into your institution. Maybe this one is for you. So follow me as I drive along and give a reflection of my thoughts as always. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Here we go. Back in reverse, turn that light off. Make sure to check your mirrors. It's early in the morning, I'm going to work now. It's roughly time to move on. It's going to be a wonderful day. Think positively and things will work out. Yes, I must say I've been blessed this year. So many things to do. I've been able to travel certain places to talk about artificial intelligence. AI is one thing, but we have to still consider pedagogy. We have to think about the digital divide and there are so many other things. But this morning I want to focus on one thing, getting AI ready, what it means. You know, when I started this journey as it relates to AI roughly six years ago or more, I would say more because I started to dive in things as it relates to AI algorithms roughly in 2017, I knew something big was coming. And if you had followed the stream of what was happening, something big was on the horizon. I told some people to get ready. They didn't understand, they didn't listen. Because what I found out with the sectors in the United States, they're reactive. And for a futurist, I normally see things coming along the line. And I try to tell people, but because it's not relevant to them, they don't address it, but when the time comes, everyone dives in. And that's all right. But for those who are establishing themselves in the field, that's another thing. But I want to talk about institutional readiness, what it means. You can't assume that you're ready because you have everyone talking about artificial intelligence. You have to set a framework. And what I realize is that AI came suddenly for some people. And when it came, many institutions ran away from it. They said, you know what, we don't want students to use it. It's problematic, you know, and they tried to ban it. And eventually it did work out. They tried to navigate around it. it. Didn't work out and they realized now, wow, everyone is using it. And some people got a head start. Yeah, they got a head start and they have been using it ever since. But as they try to use these technologies within the institution, you realize that one thing is clear. It's fragmented. It's everywhere. Everyone is trying to get on the bag wagon as it relates to artificial intelligence. And let me say, they have to because AI is not going anywhere. It's right here. Yeah, it's right here. So what we have to do, we have to really assess where we are. And if you are in an institution, if you are in an institution today, listening to this, you must ask yourself where you are as it relates to the AI. You must ask where your faculty are, where your students are, where the administrative staff are, and also those who work in the community. Where are they? We don't want to leave anyone out of this remit. So when we talk about teaching and learning, it's going to affect every other aspect of our lives. We look at certain things. We have to ask ourselves, are we ready? You have to involve every single person in it. Because if you're trying to transform your institution, you can't leave anyone out. You have to do what you need to do. So I would say you have to organize your lens, you have to navigate the space, and you have to understand where you are. So I always start with a SWOT analysis, and I've designed one, I'm gonna show you one right here, so you can assess your institutional needs. You have to understand where you are, who needs training, and so forth. But the heart of any education system is of course teaching and learning, and we have to address that too. So we have to look at these things and say where we're going to be. So when you've finished on your assessment and you understand where you are, you have to say, all right, you know what? In order to move these things ahead, what do I need? And then I would say to you, have a committee or a task force in your institution to look at your needs. You must have a representation of various individuals across discipline because that is going to be important. And of course, you have to have dialogue with other people who are not academics or teachers. It should not just center around teachers because if you want to push your university to the element of looking for, looking beyond, then that's what you need to do. So you have done that. And it's time for really reflecting on things. So you think about these things that you need to do. 
So having done that, you, you say to yourself, what are the findings of the committee? Where are we? What do we need? And of course, you know that AI is not going to run without resources. So you have to think about funding the committee's work. Yes, you have to fund the committee's work. And as you're deploying the committee, I would say to you, you know what? It's essential that you have a plan. A plan that will, of course, a plan that will, of course, be a five-year plan, but it has to be revised, I would say, every six months based on the trajectory of what's happening in relation to AI. Key to the deployment of AI, of course, is going to be AI literacy. And I'm not talking about tools. I went to some presentations the other day and I heard people talking about AI literacy is about tools. No, it's not about the using the tool. It's about understanding a lot of stuff about ethics, you know, data protection and so forth. The use of the tool and deployment of the tool, I would say secondary, because you must understand your responsibility before you use these tools. So having said that, you have to educate your population about critical AI literacy. And I've done a video on that. If you want to check my videos out, you can check that one out. I'll put a link in the video description for you to have that. But once you allow the institution and individuals in that institution to know where you're going because they have the AI literacy and the skills, then you have to deploy the necessary tools that will enhance the work. You know, because AI is about using various tools to maximize the work. And I think we have to understand that too. And once you're able to move on to that level, there has to be some training and development and ongoing training and evaluation. And departments throughout the school need to be working on that. I would say, rather than start with, you know, a mandate regarding, you know what, let us see what we can do now and get it out. I would start with, I would say, getting things to a point where, you know what, we can rule things out, but everyone benefits. And I think that's important to know. Because you know what, I've been to places where people have access to technology within the same institution and others don't in the same institution. You know, so therefore, and that's a level of inequality. So we have to be reminded of that. And I would say there might be various task force set up in the institution. Some might be looking at how it can be productive to their zone because, you know, there, there are possibilities there. But moreover, it should be centralized. The effort should be centralized and not fragmented. Because what I'm noticing these days is that Efforts related to AI within institutions are fragmented. No one talks, everyone has their pocket of people or experts. And sometimes that is important. I'm not undervaluing that. But there must be a central voice to, of course, be an advocate for that. The central voice, of course, should not take over the role of demanding specific things that people must follow in their experimentation but there must be a dominant guidance. So you must be flexible because you don't want to close these doors to creativity. I've seen sometimes where individuals come in to do certain things and what they do is take away the creativity of people. You don't want that. So you want to have that free flow, that movement where people can really say, you know what, I like that tool, I can experiment, I can do something, but at the same time, there's some governance. And I think you have to have a governance regarding that. The governance should be clearly articulated in the sense that it must be really spelled out. You know, just not maybe just a brief, because a brief is not good enough. I think a comprehensive documentation so people can understand their full responsibility, how they need to use a tool and so forth. And of course, it should not be designed just for AI, because AI is just one emerging thing that is on the horizon now, and others, other, other things will come along. So we have to be mindful of that. You have to navigate, check the population, that was one. You have to ensure that you set up a committee that's working to articulate the, the mission of the university or institution, and that committee should be broad span, should include others. You come up with a five-year framework that's driven by the stakeholders. Yes, stakeholders are very important too. And you evaluate that consistently. You have to have AI training. You have to upscale every aspect of your population, not just academics. Everyone needs to be upscaled, meaning 
the person who is also doing the maintenance or the cleaning needs to be updated regarding AI because that can improve their communication. I've always said that AI is for all and not for some, and that's what I mean. You're not going to include the top people and leave the people who are sweeping and doing the maintenance there out of this AI system. They have a right to use the same communication tools that you use to enhance your creativity to communicate with others. We should also have individuals who are responsible for viewing the terrain as it relates to artificial intelligence. One person can't really manage everything because as a person looking at AI, it's too much sometimes, but maybe someone who could coordinate the effort. Notwithstanding, use the experts that you have around you. That's important. Use the experts that you have around you because it's so important to get these experts to come in and of course, help you out. There are so many institutions with experts that sit right there and sometimes you don't know them or you ignore them. There are two ways, right? So uh, I would say use the experts around you, have dialogue. And I want to say, examine those who say they're experts because I think it's important to understand that they have knowledge of the area. Yeah, I went to a discussion a couple of weeks ago. I heard someone presenting on something. And of course, it was a dominant topic. And 32 minutes in the presentation, the person had not defined the term as it relates to a specific term in AI. And when the definition was given by the expert, up to now, the articulation of that term has not been given. So we must understand that when we really get someone, the person knows about the item that they're talking about. I'm going to stop now because I think I've done a lot of talking, but I want to say that the movement towards AI in an institution is not a single fold, but a multidirectional fold and multidisciplinary in itself. And that is how you're going to move ahead. I want to say that if you have this synergy, these ideas, put them together, work as a unit. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to close off. So, okay, next time.